in this part of the lecture, we're going to finish off um, line integrals and integrating over curves. In particular, we're going to look at the fundamental theorem of line integrals. Very interesting. The big plus with this um, idea is that it saves you massive amounts of time. Okay, in certain cases, not always, but it's it's there to be used when possible. Okay, so let's just refresh our memory from high school. What is a fundamental theorem? Remember, remember, or actually, first to university. The fundamental theorem of calculus. Anybody remember that? Fundamental theorem of calculus. What does it say? Anyone? Anyone want to have a go? Or is it too fundamental? <laughs> who thinks? Who thinks they know it? I'm looking at you. <laughs> I know you know it. <laughs> Essentially, the fundamental theorem of calculus says, in a great, it's not, it's nothing um, too abstract or anything. The fundamental theorem of calculus says that integration and differentiation are opposites. They're reverse processes. That's it. Okay? If you want to think of it as another way, you think integration undoes differentiation, and differentiation undoes integration. So in first year, you would have seen something like this. Suppose. You're integrating a function of one variable, let's say. Let's say, um, yeah, this. And you know an antiderivative for little f. You can find an antiderivative for that little f. Well, in this case, it's just. Yes? Does that look familiar? If you have an antiderivative and you're integrating a function, you just use this kind of difference um, uh, expression. Now, the, the, the question is, we've been integrating over curves. So is there some sort of time-saving fundamental theorem that can save us time when integrating over curves? Just involving the endpoints of the curve. Okay, that, 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 that's the, the, the key with this, with this, the, with this um, fundamental theorem. Essentially, this is the, integral you're, the, the interval you're integrating over. The right-hand side only depends on the value of big F at those endpoints, the endpoints of the interval. So think of that red line as a curve now. Is there, if we're integrating over that curve, can we just use the endpoints to come up with the um, value of, of our, our, our line integral? And the answer is yes, under certain cases. Now, remember we've been dealing with vector fields. Some vector fields have a special property known as path independence. <coughs> Now, what that means is that if you integrate the vector field, take the line integral of that vector field, the line integral only depends on the endpoints of that of the thing you're integrating over, the, the curve. The important thing here is that some, some vector fields have this path independence property. In particular, what we mean when we say path independence is that suppose you've got two points A and B, and I, I can form an infinite number of curves joining A and B. What I mean by path independence is the integrals over all those curves from the point A to the point B have the same value. Okay? So here's you know, here's two ways from getting from point A to point B over C1 and C2. Path independence 
means this. Okay? And for all other curves as well, joining A and B. Now when you think about it, that's a very powerful property. That's a very powerful property. The uh, vector field with this, prop, with this sort of path independent property is called um, conservative. Conservative. Anyone here who heard of a cons conservative vector field before? Anyone? Have you? Yes? No? Okay. All right, so we're going to use gradients in the context of these vector fields. Now, up here I've got little f. You might have phi in your notes. I just changed it to little f to keep it consistent with this kind of notation. Okay, so suppose I've got a vector field. Well, we're going to call that vector field a gradient vector field if there's a scalar valued function such that the grad little f equals your vector field big F. And we refer to this little f as a potential function. So let me give you a let me give you an example. Okay? Shh, shh, shh. Let me give you an example. Suppose I've got a function a vector field, say it's just a radial vector field, xi plus yj plus zk. Now, or x comma y comma z if you want to put it as a, as a triple, ordered triple. Can you come up with a function whose gradient gives you that vector field? Remember, think back to the gradient. The gradient is just grad f is just... df dx, comma df dy, comma df dz, or in just ijk notation. Okay, where the subscripts f sub x means df dx, etc. Who can think of a think up a function that when you take the, gra the gradient of it gives you this vector? Yes. Yes. Excellent. If I try, let's just experiment for a minute. I claim that this vector field is a gradient vector field because let's just def define a, a function little f x squared plus y squared plus z squared all over 2 that satisfies grad f equals my vector field f. Okay? Can you see that? Take the gradient of x squared plus y squared plus z squared all on 2, you're going to get xi plus yj plus zk. So this following result is the main objective of the rest of this, or the main point of the rest of this lecture. It's a fantastic result and it can save you a lot of time when um, when integrating over curves, because it's just about the endpoints. Okay, so suppose I've got a vector field f, and the component functions are continuous. Now, under those conditions, there exists a differentiable function a, little f such that this is true, if and only if the line integral is independent of the path from, say, point A to point B. And furthermore, if the integral is independent of the path, its value is this. Now, that over here, compare that with that. It just depends on the endpoints. Okay? It just depends on the endpoints of the curve. That's the important part of this of this um, result. Okay. Now the thing is, well, how, how, a good question here is, well, how do you know when there is an f that, that, that such that this is true? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So let me um, try to show you where this comes from, and actually, it relies on the first-year fundamental theorem of calculus that I just showed you. 
All right, but it's kind of a little bit a little bit um, different. Okay, so let's. I'm just going to um, squeeze in a proof for the, for part two. All right, so let there be some f such that the gradient of little f equals our vector field. Let's parameterize c via our function r of t, okay? Now we're going to assume that the point big B is just r, uh, big A is just the point r of this A. And similarly with the other endpoint. Now, let's work on this left hand side and see if we can get the right hand side. So let's move to the usual setup here for our line integral. So this is just the left hand side written in terms of t. And I know that f. Little f satisfies grad f equals f. So let's replace this with grad f. Okay. Now, does anybody recognize what grad f evaluated here dotted with r prime is? What is that? It's just that, oh, what? Uh, almost. It's just the derivative. It, it, it's just here, actually. It's just the derivative of this. It's the chain rule. <coughs> so, what do I know now? I'm integrating a derivative. So it's just this, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, is just f r of b minus f r of a. And that's just this. Sweet. OK? So it is just a simple application of the fundamental theorem of calculus from first year and the chain, uh, the, um, yeah, the chain rule for gradients. So that's why it works. That's why it works. But let's do a problem and see how it works. Now you'll be able to see exactly the time-saving methods that this um, uh, approach gives you in the next example. So let's have a look. Anyone still going on this one? Oh. All right, let's have a look. Now this is a good example. This is something that you might get on, say, a class test or in session. Really, there's not that much work involved with this problem because you're not really doing any integration um, in the line integral sense. So here we're asked to compute the work done by this conservative vector field along any smooth curve C from this point to this point. Okay, so it's a, it's a line segment in three-dimensional space. Uh, so, well, actually, the, the, the straight line is, 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 is the line segment, but we can go along any path. So we might go along the line segment path. But we can also go along any other path. Okay. Now usually what we would do here, we, we, we're usually given some sort of curve to work with and we parameterize it. But here, we, we're working with any, any smooth curve from the origin to the point 1, comma 1, comma 1. So, let's see if we can apply 
our fundamental theorem of line integrals here. So what we would like to do is find a f such that the gradient of this f is this vector field up here. So now this is this is a, a challenge that you'll have to um, face if you get a question like this. You have to somehow produce this this function little f. So can anyone see what kind of little f my uh, what kind of function my little f should be? X, y, z. That's one. X, y, z plus a constant. That would be fine as well. But with this one, it's, it's pretty easy to guess. But sometimes it's not so easy to guess. So let me just write down an extra line to give you some We want to solve df dx equals this, yz, df dy equals a second component function, x times z, and df dz equals x times y. So I've got three equations there, and essentially if I integrate them, so if I integrate over here, I'll get x, y, z with respect to x. I'll get f equals x, y, z plus a function of y and z, which are like constants. If I integrate the middle one, I'll get, with respect to y, I'll get f equals x, y, z plus, you know, a constant inverted commas of integration, a function involving x and z. And similarly for the last one. Now, if I just compare those, I can choose the functions for each integration just to be the zero functions. Okay, sometimes you, you compare them. Okay, so that's our function there. So how good is it going to be now? So F is a gradient field, and to calculate the work, it's just the line integral. Now, by the fundamental theorem of line integrals, it's just this, Footley. So what is F at the point B? Well, B is just 1, 1, 1. So I go up here, which is 1 times 1 times 1. And at 0, okay, so this is going to be 1. How good is that? Huh? How good is that? Hmm. That's pretty good. You can see exactly how powerful this theorem is. It's just the endpoints rather than the whole curve you need to worry about. Okay? That's the key. That's the key. So let's have a look at um, um, when the conditions, um, what sort of F satisfy the, um, uh, these um, ideas. This is a good test for whether you have a conservative field or not. Suppose I've got a function, a vector field with functions that are, uh, have continuous partial derivatives. Then f is conservative if and only if these partial derivatives are all equal. 